Hello everyone, this is Vipul Jain and today in this video I will be showcasing how you can upload multiple files in a document set in SharePoint document library using Power Apps and Power Automate. So this is I will say the video 2 of my continuation of the previous video which I created and showcased you all that how you can create the document set dynamically in a SharePoint document library. Now in this video, I will be showcasing you that how you can now upload the files in that dynamically created document set. So both the things will happen together in this video now. So I will highly recommend you that before watching this video, please watch my previous video, which is I will say a predecessor for this video. And this is the successor video. But definitely I will post the link of the previous video in the a description of this video so stay tuned so in this particular video what we are going to see is that uh, i will be creating an interface uh, which you can see on this left hand side i will be creating an interface where there will be attachment control and there will be a gallery control and we will be using or leveraging power automate to upload the files in that dynamically created document set all right so now the context have been set I repeat again to see my previous video before watching this video because that will give you a fair understanding that how the document sets gets created dynamically first of all and after that how the files can be uploaded. So this is a very practical scenario in any live project or any uh, practical scenarios I'm talking about where let's say you have a form having some metadata and fields which needs to be entered by the user and after that user has to uh, upload some documents so this is kind of a one of the design which you can use that instead of the list attachments, you can upload your files in a document set within a document library where they, because there you also get the option to tag your files individually. So let's see this in action now in the Power Apps environment. So this is the Power Apps environment. Uh, I just wanted to show you now. And so here, uh, first, I will be creating the document set and the multiple files can be attached in an attachment control and when they will be moved to the gallery control on the right hand side, this is the gallery control and there is a button which is disabled as of now. So I will first walk you through that how I have implemented it and then I will give you the final uh, output or the demo that how this is working. So for this particular uh, implementation, uh, this you already know, this is a text box and a button which I already showed you in the previous video. You can watch my previous video that how the document set can be created dynamically. Now after that, this is a control which, which is a attachment control. You can see this is attachment control. Now please remember, attachment control is not available by default in the Power Apps. So there is a trick for adding the attachment control. What you can do, you can add uh, one more screen, add an edit form. And when you add an edit form, you can attach it to any list. And then when you add an edit form, then what will happen that uh, you can copy and paste that attachment control from that particular screen to here. So that's what I did. I did the same thing because if you go to insert and search for an attachment control, there is no as such attachment control which is available in Power Apps as of now. So this is the attachment control, right, which I've used. And this is the right arrow icon, uh, which I've used. This is the gallery control. Now I'll start with the attachment control. When I talk about the attachment control, attachment control comes with some properties like maximum number of attachments you can specify, the maximum uh, basically attachment size you can specify for the customers. Even uh, you can also implement some kind of validations on this attachment control that what kind of files are only allowed to be uploaded. For example, you don't want the customers or your client to upload exe files or maybe JavaScript files, JSON files, and so on. You only want the Microsoft files, for example, PPT or XLSX or DOCX files should be uploaded. So those kind of validations can be definitely applied on the attachment control. Now coming to this right arrow icon, in the right arrow icon, what I'm doing is I'm creating a collection collection of files. And this collection of files is attach, attach, uh, the attachment control dot attachments. And then I'm resetting my attachment control which is attach files. So this is the right arrow icon. Now in this gallery, this is super important to understand. In this gallery, I've added uh, multiple controls. Now in this gallery, what I've added, 
is uh, one is this separator line which comes by default this is a label which i have added now there is html text control i have also used for another kind of a label uh, which is document type so i want to capture the document type also i have used one again label to get the name okay and this i am getting from this item dot name which will be uh, the name of the file by default all right and then one drop down control i am using and i am placing some uh, values in this uh, basically drop down control all right so these are some of the controls which are used and this is the button uh, for, which will actually upload the files dynamically in the document set so this is very important to understand on this button i am uh, looping through or iterating through all the files of the gallery so i'm using the for all function for all gallery dot all items and i'm creating a collection collection of final data which needs to be uploaded now this final data will take four values title name data stream and document type all these values will be captured from the gallery control which the user will enter and once this is done finally i am running a flow a power automate flow with the name upload files i am passing the uh, binary or the json data in the json format uh, which is the collection which is there in my gallery which is collection of final data in the uh, json format i am passing it to the power automate at the same time uh, i am passing one more parameter to the power automate that where these files needs to be uploaded which is my document set now as of now i am passing something like text input 1.txt which will be my this uh, text input so where whatever name or id i will pass uh during the implementation when i will show it to you so uh, the files will be uploaded in that particular document set but in your practical scenario in, in the client projects what you can do also is you can pass a specific id uh to the power automate flow and in that particular id of the document set uh the documents or the files will be uploaded so that is how i uh, implemented it now i will uh, navigate you to the flow that how i have created the flow the flow is again very simple uh, this is the power apps trigger which comes by default when you add a flow to a power apps two variables i have created uh, this is the one variable let me take you to the edit screen of this power automate two variables i have created one variable will hold the collection of the files which are coming from the power apps and the second variable will hold uh, basically uh, uh, the uh, the name of the document set so one variable is a collection of files which is coming uh, from the power apps which we are taking from the power apps the document set name also i am taking from the power apps because this i am passing from the power apps to the power automate this is the compose function where i am converting the data the files collection to a json format parse json since this is an array object i am uh, using apply to each and in the apply to each i am just creating the file and after creating the file i am also updating the file contents please remember one important thing for this file name this is straightforward you can use the title but for file content for creating the files in sharepoint that needs to be created in a binary format you have to pass the binary format then only the files can be created in sharepoint so i am using a function data uri to binary as expression and then i am passing uh, the data stream to it now one important thing one important trick i just wanted to tell you that if you see this gallery very closely i am using a image control which is a hidden control so if i run this app you don't see a image control but there is a hidden image control which i have used and why i have used it that uh, the image property of this control i have set to this item dot value now what is this this item dot value because we have to pass some data stream right and this value is the local memory value which is get stored when the files are uploaded all right so what i want to say is let's say if i attach the file if i attach some files let's say uh, in this power apps and i add it to the gallery i select let's say some document type and this upload files gets enabled now if i go back to the power app studio to the collection if i show you the collection of files now in the collection of files there is a random value which gets generated which is the in memory value for that particular document now this value we are leveraging in our image control so this image control basically giving me the data stream so what happens finally on the click of the upload button i am passing a collection and this is the data stream and i am using the value image uh, property of the image control to pass it as a data stream so this is a very important trick which we have to implement when working with this gallery control
now let's see this in action uh, let's create a document set dynamically and let's upload the files also dynamically to the data uh, to the document set along with some metadata so let me run the app and let me give some uh, random name of the document set so demo by Whipple. this is the docu uh, document set which will be created in the document library so i'm clicking on this button create document set all right and uh, then let me check in my library whether the document set gets created successfully it's yes it's created successfully demo by Whipple. now uh, i'm attaching just random files very quickly so this is one file one excel file also i want to attach so let's say attach these files and now i can tag these files or add a metadata to the individual files this is the document files let's say cover sheet i give the document type and i have also implemented one validation you see here i have implemented one validation that until and unless this label is enabled this button will be disabled because i have to fill all the mandatory fields document type is a mandatory field the moment i select this action plan the label the validation message goes and then i can upload the files to the document set i will click on the upload files the moment i click on the upload files the power automate flow executes at the back end and the files will be uploaded in the respective document set which i have provided just one thing i just wanted to tell you uh, don't get confused that uh, why I have added two buttons. This is just for the demo purpose because I just wanted to extend the demo which I showed you in the previous video which I created uh, with the name create document set dynamically. What you can do is on one single click of the button or on one single button, you can create the document set and also you can upload the file. So both the functionalities can be done on one single button. So let's see if the files are created in the document set. Let me refresh the library. Let's go inside the library and uh, that's it. So you can see here the two documents are uploaded successfully and the document type is also tagged, which we provided uh, in our Power App screen. So the documents are created dynamically or the documents are uploaded dynamically and the document set is also created. And at the same time, the third and the last thing, the metadata tagging which is in my case i use document type you can use other columns also for example start date and date contract type and so on and those metadata can be added dynamically in this fashion so that's all in this video i hope this helps in your practical implementation keep watching my videos and keep commenting thank you bye bye